Hi Aries, welcome to your second video for the month of February on my channel. I wanted to do a mid-month for you and three other signs as a thank you for the amount of engagement um, that you've had on my channel for this month. You guys have among one of the highest views and the highest level um, of engagement in terms of comments and likes. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I love seeing the growth of, from this channel. It's absolutely amazing. So please, if you have not already, click that subscription button there. That would help so much to get the message to whoever needs to receive it. Today, I have for you a love spread that focuses on you, Aries. Um, first, what you need to let go of, what might be preventing you from love, blocks to love, what you need to welcome into your life to receive more love, hidden influences, your greatest attribute that you offer to the relationship, what you need most out of a relationship, and what you need to do to feel the most love. Here I have angels and ancestors oracle cards to kind of round it out. And yeah, let's jump right in. So first, what do you need to let go of? Here's the queen of wands. This is you as a fire sign. And so perhaps what you need to let go of in order to draw more love into you is perhaps to let go of these hard drawn lines about what your life has to look like or what your love life has to look like. Perhaps your vision has been so locked on a certain idea or a certain person or a certain timeline and that is just not serving some of you at this time. Instead of deciding what it has to be, perhaps become a little softer and allow it to be whatever it is, right? After you manifest, you set your intentions for what you would like, you have to let go of the firm um, idea of what that could look like. So if we're getting too specific with our manifestations or we're just insistent on having one specific person or one specific type of person, we can actually miss our blessings. So if you... If you find that you are um, setting expectations that are either too specific or too high, this could be something that you need to let go of, this ideal, this perfection that you're seeking because no situation is perfect, no person is perfect, and perhaps the perfect thing for you is in a different package than what you might expect it. Okay, um, this could also represent the tendency of fire signs to just burn intensely and brightly without really thinking about what the other person is feeling or what the other person wants out of a relationship. So we need to let go of the idea that your way is the only way because there are many ways. There are many ways. Um, what is preventing you from receiving love? Again, we have the magician. And it's interesting to me that these two are so independent and powerful. Because I think a lot of you Aries, you're feeling the same thing. Like you're really independent. You're really powerful. You know you can do anything. You can make anything happen. Um, but perhaps it's this same energy that is impeding you from receiving love. If you are so keen on doing things and making things happen, then you aren't necessarily receiving the things that are the best for you because you're out there just trying to make things happen versus letting them happen. So one aspect that could be impeding your love life at this time is your perception that you need to be doing something, that you need to be seeking something or going after something or charging in that direction or making it happen all on your own. When in reality, in order to receive the best possible love, you need to allow that to come to you. Okay. This could also represent maybe um, some dishonesty on your part. Um, or on your partner's part, the magician can make anything happen. So in a similar way, the magician can spin any story 
or anything into a story. So make sure that you are being completely honest with yourself and with other people. And yeah, just keep that in mind. This is our first major arcana. So this is something that's important. You don't have to make love happen. Love will come to you. You must receive it. All right, your next card, it says, what do I need to welcome? And this is the death card. So if you have a Scorpio in your life, perhaps this is what you need to welcome. Welcome them. For others, this is representative of needing to end certain cycles. So if this is about rebirth, right? Because with everything that dies, something um, new is birthed. Nothing, something new comes into play. So if you need to welcome into your sphere, into your world, new, fresh beginnings. This could be a new beginning with, a, with someone that you've already connected with in the past. Just ensure that it feels different, that things feel different this time. And for others of you, this means a completely new partner. In order, for some of you, in order to receive love, you have to let go of the current situation or the current partnership that you're in. If you are in a loveless relationship and things are not vibing, they're not working, you're not happy, let it go. Let that relationship go so that something new that is much more fulfilling can come in and work its magic on you. Next, what hidden influences are you unaware of at this time? If you have a Taurus in your life, perhaps an ex, then this individual, okay, or maybe maybe it's not an ex, maybe it's a child, maybe it's um, a friend that's a Taurus or that's behaving in this hierophant way. So and it, something that is influencing your relationship is the expectations of others. Perhaps someone is married. Perhaps there are some religious factors into play, some familial disagreements, um, institutionalized differences. Okay, that could be impeding your relationship at this time. Okay, so for some of you, maybe you're connecting with a partner who is a different religion than you and it's making things difficult. Um, maybe there's some family issues here. Maybe there's a Taurus that is very protective of you and doesn't want you to enter the relationship. Whatever it is, there is some um, institutionalized level that is putting pressure on your ability to accept and receive love. So examine the people around you, the groups around you. This This is a card of of group mentality okay um, so this could be influencing your relationship currently maybe it's a marriage it's it's got something to do and, and since I'm talking to lots of different people out there this could represent a, a lot of different things okay so one thing I do notice however is that all three of these cards are major arcana and so these are big lessons that you're learning, okay, of not letting society or other people impact your relationship or determine the value of your relationship. Um, what you need to welcome, like ending things, this is a big sign, this is a big deal for you. And um what's preventing you from receiving love this this doing assuming that you need to do a lot so these top three i would pay special attention here because they are a major arcana all right next we have what you offer a relationship and here we have the six of pentacles so there's a lot of charity you're very giving and loving and um there's a lot of reciprocity here where you are willing and unafraid to give of yourself, to give of your resources, to share, to, um, to help, to assist. 
Okay, so that, that charitable aspect of who you are, um, of giving yourself to others, is an absolute strength. What do you need most in your relationship at this time? We have the star. If you are connecting with an Aquarius, perhaps you need them most. But generally, the star represents um, healing, emotional healing of contentedness, of vulnerability. So in a relationship, you need these things. You need to heal from what's happened in the past. You need to become more vulnerable. So instead of being presenting as someone that is um, too fiery to be reached, to allow yourself to be soft and watery and receptive, absolutely receptive, Okay, especially since it's under this magician card where we talked about doing too much, too much of the yang. And here's the yin where we're just allowing things to happen, allowing um, life situations and love situations to unfold. Finally, what do you need to do to feel the most love? And here we have the seven of cups. So... For you, Aries, it is time for you to take a look at the, the different cups that you have available to you. Take a look inside and explore some of these emotional realms um, and opportunities that are being given to you. Take a look at your options and see, try and visualize where each cup can take you in the end. We have some negative, quote unquote, things in here. We have snakes and some scary goblins, but we also have jewels and success. So what you need to do in order to feel the most love is to choose for yourself a direction, a new direction to go, um, to devote yourself to that direction and to manifesting whatever it is that you choose from your cup. And by focusing yourself and your intentions and your mind and your emotions on this thing, you will attract to you your greatest desires. It's just a matter of becoming clear as to what that is. We have a lot of characters here. Okay, So if you've been dealing with multiple people, again, in order to feel the most love, you need to make a decision between them. You make there's some sort of decision that needs to be made for yourself so that you can receive what you've been wanting. The angels and ancestors card we have is the protection guardian. It says to drop your shields. That yes, you have experienced a lot. You've been through so much um, that would make you guarded and that would make it so you know, anybody would naturally feel like they can't trust or um, they can't open up. But this is telling you not to allow the experiences from your past. Don't allow those things to make you hard, to make you callous in terms of relationships. Stay open as much as possible. And the final one is drum. It says dream and journey. And this reminds me automatically of this seven of cups. Dream, visualize, get clear. Well, first dream so that you can become clear on which reality you would like to embark upon, which direction you would like to move in. By remaining open, visualizing, and then deciding, you can draw into you more love and more opportunity. So Aries, I hope this resonated. I hope the format makes sense um, and gives you some action points for what you can work on. Uh, because sometimes with these love readings, you can feel a little um, disempowered right? But here I feel like there's a lot of action points or a lot of things that, um, that you can work on. 
that can help you feel like you were progressing toward something more substantial and more fulfilling. So I hope that this reading has done that for you today. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think and be sure to subscribe. I thank you again so much for your support and your love and your energy. And I will see you in another video. Bye, Aries.